Hello viewers, and welcome to the guide that will make your Scratch Rooms game easy. You might have heard of games such as Expanded Rooms or Open Source Rooms. Part 1 of this tutorial will be about player movement and room generation. First of all, make a new project. We have our Scratch Cat, our empty backdrops, but we must give a name to this rooms game. I'm going to name it Uncomplicated Rooms. Let's check if the name is taken. Looks like the name is free, so let's get into the player. Delete the Scratch Cat stuff and make a circle. A good size for the circle is 50 by 50 pixels. To get a perfect circle, hold shift while making it. Make sure to center it. We are gonna make our player yellow and give it a face. Also, make sure to name the sprite player. Now, we are going to go code the movement system. There are three main types of movement to choose from. The first one is that the player always moves to your mouse. The second one is when you hit a key, moves the player to your mouse. The last one, and the one I'll be using, is when the player taps a key, the sprite moves a bit towards the mouse. Anyways, to keep the video short, I'll cut to when the movement systems are done, and tell you how they work. So the one in the top left, is the first one. It makes it always move towards the mouse, if it isn't touching the mouse. The second one does that, but only when you press the W key. And the third one which is not finished just yet, makes it move a little towards the mouse pointer whenever the W key is held. Also, if you wonder how I'm getting blocks from typing in Scratch, or how I have dark mode, just get Scratch add-ins. As you can see, the movement system is working very well. Now, we will be creating walls that the player can't move past. First, we are gonna make two rectangles to test with. Just know that you can use Alt to copy a shape, and you can use Shift to move it up or sideways. Right now, we can walk straight through walls. But we can modify the code in the player sprite to make it not move if touching a wall. First add in if touching walls then else block and move the movement script inside the else. Now, we copy and paste the movement script into the then and change the number to walk speed. If we go to the wall, we will be moved away from it. But there is still one large bug. If you turn around, the player gets sucked into the wall. An easy fix to this bug is to just move the point towards mouse pointer block below the move 5 steps block. Also make sure to add go to x, 0 y, 0 to when flag clicked at the top. The movement, script, and walls are finished. Now, we must move on to the door. Anyways, the door should be a skinny rectangle. Make it any color you want, but I recommend the color brown. Anyways, we should expand the walls to fit the door. Make a variable called A or whatever letter your section is, followed by a hyphen. It took me a while to find the right size for the door.
So here is our cool movement system in our cool lobby, but something is missing. Backdrops. The best backdrop colors are red and blue. Ours is going to be blue. To make your backdrop look much better, give it a radial gradient effect. And look how cool that is. Anyways, the next things we'll make are hiding spots. We're only going to need one sprite for all eight hiding spots. Let me just make the designs. These are my designs for the gray locker, blue locker, and table. You can make them much better if you want. Now, we will make the script that generates the hiding spots. To make the video shorter, I'll just cut to when the script is done, and show you how it works. How this works is it creates 8 clones, each one with a different number, changes it to a random hiding spot, and moves it to a certain location. It also has a 50% chance of just deleting the hiding spot, so not every hiding spot is available to hide it. Now, we are going to make the door open and generate rooms. We will add a forever loop for if the player is touching the door, it will broadcast an event called, Door Open. Add the block, when Door Open received, and place the block, go to X, minus 200 Y, 0 under it, so it moves the player when the door is open. Also add, change door number variable by 1, during the broadcast door open. If you added, when I receive door open under the hiding spot gen script, it will generate new hiding spots when the door is open. Also make it so it deletes all the clones when the door is opened. And add, wait 0.01 above set index to 0. You may have noticed that the hiding spots aren't generating immediately, but there's a stupid but working solution to this. The repeat block has a little delay before each repeat, so if you just add the repeated part on itself 8 times, it will immediately generate all the hiding spots. So that's part 1. In the next part, we will fix some bugs, add sounds, and most importantly, add hiding to hiding spots.